What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here with some more Final Fantasy 16. So first of all, I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas, because assuming that I keep to my self-imposed schedule, this should be coming out on Christmas Day. So I hope you guys are having a great one, and I hope you enjoy this video as well. If you want to do me an early Christmas present, if you want to click like and subscribe to the channel, that would be fantastic. But anyways, moving on, last time out we started off the game, got to see Clive in his younger days and in the present day as well. Now he's wyvern, all grown up and badass looking. And we got to meet a lot of interesting characters. We got to see Clive's young brother Joshua, as well as Jill, and of course cute little Torgal. And then everybody died. Uh, Clive's dad died, Joshua died, the Lord Commander Murdoch died, and Tyler and Wade, his two companions died. Everybody died in, in the flashback. Kind of depressing, honestly. <laughs> and it makes me worried for the rest of this game that things are just going to get even worse because it definitely seems to be a lot more brutal than I'm used to for Final Fantasy games. And granted, I should have expected that since it's a rated M game, but I don't think I realized that when I started playing for some reason. <laughs> then we jump back to the future and we saw that apparently Jill is now the dominant for Shiva, which I, I'll be curious to find out when that happened. But because Clive was tasked to kill her, he decided not to, and then got attacked by the people he had been working with up to this point. So, now here we are, we're in Sid's hideaway, got to meet him as well as a couple of his companions. So right off the bat, I do have some theories that I want to throw out there, and of course, no spoilers, because I don't want to know whether these theories are true or correct or not. But, in between when I first played and this recording, I did have a couple thoughts. Because I was very confused on what happened back in the past. It seems to be a little bit of mystery. So first of all, Joshua. I'm not convinced that he is gone for good. A lot of that has to do with the fact that the Phoenix is so prominent <laughs> in the, the art for the game. Now granted, Clive obviously, he's still a bearer for the Phoenix. So it's not like the Phoenix is completely out of the picture and not talked about. But I don't know, they're showing the Phoenix itself. So unless Clive becomes the new dominant for the Phoenix now that Joshua's out of the picture, I, I kind of am thinking Josh is going to come back. Not only that, but also the Phoenix is known to resurrect itself out of its ashes. So there's a very good chance that we might see Joshua again. I'm not fully convinced on that. It's just a theory that popped into my head between last recording session and now. Also on the mystery of Ifrit. I'm still kind of leaning toward the idea that maybe Clive is Ifrit, or he's Ifrit's dominant. There are a couple things that go against that theory. There are a couple things that go for that theory. I'm not really sure what to think about it. I mean, it definitely seemed like he was being affected right before Ifrit popped out. So whether that's because the person who was about to become Ifrit was affecting him, or if he actually was becoming Ifrit, I'm not entirely sure. But if it's not Clive, my other thought, which is a little concerning, is that it might be Torgal. <laughs> and the only reason I thought that is because in going back to it, there was that scene where Ifrit was essentially t tearing apart Phoenix. And in that moment, Clive heard Torgal whimpering. And in my head, all I could think was, well, if he is, if Torgal is Ifrit's dominant, which I mean, Ifrit kind of looks like a dog then it could have just been he was terrified because he saw Joshua becoming Phoenix turned into Ifrit and was sort of attacking out of fear of Joshua. And that's why Clive heard whimpering during that. If, if that's the case, then that would be absolutely heartbreaking because I mean, obviously I love Torval, cute little puppy. And obviously now he's a, he's a cute little wolf puppy. So yeah, just some theories that popped into my head. I don't know if any of them are even close to on the mark or not. Just something I thought I'd throw out there. But in today's episode, we're going to be getting more, hopefully, into the meat of the game. He's a soldier, then. Okay. I'd be surprised if he wasn't. Yeah, thank the you, NPCs, for interrupting me. About him. Yeah, so first we're going to explore Sid's little hideaway here. See what he's got going on. You think he'd have time for a nip with old August before scampering back to his solar, but no. Lonely, are we, August? When lightning struck, his yoke did break, his life his own again. With thunder's roll, he knew his fate and would fight it to the end. 
Okay. Well, what do you think? I woke this morn inspired. I mean, it was pretty good. You spoony bard. Uh, I, I, probably one of the greatest insults ever thrown out was in Final Fantasy IV. Uh, what was the, the old wizard's name? I think Tella was his name, and he called the bard dude. I don't remember his name at all. But he was like a little wimp. He called him a spoony bard. That was great. If you can read, don't let Otto know. We'll put you to work on the ledgers too. Oh. Apparently not a lot of people can read around here. Not going back to that life, ever. Yeah, I think uh, we're going to find out. Oh, Torgal. Might have some around here. He can't. I want to pet him. I want to pet him so badly. But I'm thinking Sid is either Ramu's dominant or uh, Ramu's bearer, because I'm pretty sure he's the one summoning the lightning, since whenever Benedicta, I think her name was, whenever she saw the lightning, she knew it was Sid. So that's what I'm assuming. Okay, Surly Smith has nothing to say. Uh, another newcomer. You mind the rules round here, or our next chat will be through the bars. Whatever you say, Jailer. A Sid botanist. Sid once told me, the blight doesn't kill the land, it only makes her forget who she once was. She'll eventually remember her purpose. All she needs is a little reminding. I'll remind her who she is. Your brand. Lady Tyre might be able to see to that. You may have been born a slave, but you're a free man now. Hmm. So I guess the brand... I mean, I know it's supposed to show that they are soldiers that have essentially been <laughs> enslaved by the Empire to, to fight for them, but it sounds like it's something that maybe has a little bit more meaning than just showing that. Because he's talking about removing it. Okay, well, I think I've done as much exploring as I can, so time to go see Sid. Careful, you. I've spent the whole morning on these steps. Oh, I'm gonna go dirty him up. How's it make feel? Just working on a pet project of mine. Though she's not above biting the hand that feeds her. What are you talking about? All right. I was hoping we might try and solve the mystery of poor Clive Rossfield. A bearer of the Sambrequa Imperial Army sent behind enemy lines. With orders to wait until it turned into a brawl, then slit the Dominant's throat in the chaos. I didn't know it was her. Oh, How could it be? Another Arthur Fist. And so, to save her neck, you slit your sergeants, then set your sights on the hills. Conveniently forgetting how the Empire deals with deserters. Because with that on your chop, my friend, we both know you won't be getting far. How does he know so much? You've fallen a long way, Lord Rossfield. I'll not have it said that I'm a poor host. What do you mean to do with her? Do with her? Why nothing? Her life is her own now. If I wanted to use her, do you think I'd be talking to you? Good point. All I want to do is help. Dominance like her, branded like you. Of course, the realm doesn't approve, which is why we live in a cave. And it's also why we need help from Brandy who know one end of a sword from the other. What say you, Clive? Will you join us? What's in it for me? Sid, was it? 
I trust that you'll do right by Jill. But until my brother is avenged, I must walk my own path. Avenged? My brother was murdered by a second dominant of fire. Phoenix is evil twin. Oh, bugger me. Another rumor proven true. I only stand here today because of Joshua. Thirteen years I've waited for this chance. I've slept in filth, drunk from a gutter, killed more men than I can count. You're right. The Empire will not suffer a deserter. This will be my best opportunity. My last. Which is why you should join us. I told you I'm not interested, I know. One of my scouts sent word there's a group of branded fugitives north of here, in the Imperial village of Lost Wing. Among them is one he believes to be a dominant of fire. Hmm. Is he certain? Interesting. What say we go and ask him? This doesn't mean I'm joining you. Let's make ready then. You'll find everything you need down in the main hall, as well as a few things you don't. Have fun. Okay. Yeah, this... I'm really curious to find out more about the... how the dominance work and all of that. <gasps> he, he's in... Oh no. What is it, Goots? Goots, was it? Perhaps you can help. Sid asked me to make ready for our mission. How does one go about that here? Uh, well... Uh, there's old Nan's place. Oh, uh, on second thoughts, uh, you maybe want to see Blackthorn first. A blacksmith? To the forge it is, then. Oh, wait, no, hold up. You'll be needing this. Blackthorn won't take no notice of you otherwise. Might not anyway. All right, I'm guessing this is... Cause I, I picked up some materials, so I'm guessing this is gonna be something to do with forging weapons and thorn? such. What if I am? I'm no time for idle chatter. I'm not here to talk. I'll be accompanying Sid to Lost Wing, and I need you to see to my equipment. You could be accompanying the goddess Grieger to our holy bedchamber for all I care. I'm not lifting a finger for you. Is that so? Well, what about this rum? Will that change your mind? Do you want that or not? I can take it back. Oh, damn you, Goots. Mm. All right, all right. No need to be hasty. Let's have a look at you. <laughs> I doubt that lock has stay a Moogle's fart. Bloody Imperials. They'd rather see their bearers dead than kid it out properly. I'll do what I can. As a favor to Goot's mind. Sweet. The crafting of new gear, as well as the upgrading of existing gear, can be done at a symbol blacksmith, as long as you have the recipe and proper materials. Select the highlighted item from the list and hold X to craft or upgrade. Okay, so I can upgrade my iron belt. Or no, I can craft an iron belt. Okay, cool. Let's equip it. And the belt sees a square. You want anything else? You bring your own materials. No problem. I'll bear that in mind. Thank you. A uh, word of advice. Don't let Sid decide what's best for you. Good advice, I appreciate that. 
Notices. When something is changed in the hideaway, a notice will appear in the upper right hand corner of the screen. In addition to stock updates for Karen's Toll, new forging recipes for the Black Hammer, there are also notices for new quests, new missives, and many other things. An icon will also appear in game as well as on the local map to indicate recent updates. I suppose I should thank Goods. So it looks like you might have quick. some more stuff for us. What do you want? Okay, so we can make a broadsword or make iron bracers. We actually have enough for iron bracers. Ah, okay. So we can reinforce iron bracers up to plus two. And reinforce the iron belt. Reinforce the broadsword. Sweet. All right, let's go ahead and make the iron bracers. Should last you a good while. Yes. And also, let's make iron belt plus yeah, two. That should do you. Okay. Anything else? I appreciate it, Blackthorn. All right, Goots, I appreciate the information. The gift worked. You have my thanks. I. Uh, uh, <laughs> Come on, nearly there. Blankets, quick as you like. Who are these guys? All right, we make them comfortable while the bed's made up. Well, you're just gonna stand there, someone fetch some water. I'll get the bucket. You go and see if Otto needs out, eh? Yeah. Wait, me? What the hell have I got myself into? It's like you've joined the group, Clive. Welcome to the family. Who are they? Huh? They're freed Imperial bearers. Who the hell are you? Same. <laughs> Shit, at this rate, you won't make it through the night. Think you can find your way up them stairs to the infirmary? We need Tyre. Well, go on. Shift your ass. I mean... Was Tyre the one looking after Jill? I could move my ass, but I don't know about shifting it. That seems weird. I don't know how that would help get me upstairs. Hello, Tarya. Your friend needs her rest. There'll be time for tearful reunions when she's recovered. I'm not here for Jill. You're wanted downstairs. There are injured bearers in need of attention. Well, why didn't you say so? I just did. <sighs> I did say so. glad there at least it seems to be a little sense of humor because again the beginning of this game was so dark it had not many laughs <laughs> a few he's going to be all right but i'll need to examine them both in the infirmary my work's just begun Another fine day at the hideaway. Do many of the bearers who come here arrive in this state? It's no easy thing, casting off your chains. By the time most pluck up the courage, they're already too far gone. These two here are the lucky ones. The name's Otto. You need anything? You ask me. Well, Otto, I do need some supplies. Do you now? Then Lady Karen over there will be more than happy to help you. Right. Oh. And thanks. Be seeing you. Not likely. I won't be staying. Is that right? <laughs> so you think? Well, for as long as you are here, consider yourself welcome. You helped us today. And we won't forget it. Side quests unlocked. Excellent. Always good to have some side quests to do in these games. Q 
Keep an eye out for the green icon above the heads of certain NPCs. These indicate they have a quest to offer. A list of current and completed quests can be viewed in the journal tab of the main menu. After accepting a quest, quest objectives will appear in the to-do list located on the right side of the screen. Objectives for the main scenario and up to three side quests can be displayed simultaneously. Any quest can be prioritized on the journal tab of the main menu by highlighting it and pressing X. Objectives for prioritized quests will remain displayed on the to-do list until the quest is completed or another quest is given priority. Priority status for a quest can be removed by highlighting it and pressing X again. The following hideaway facilities are also now available. The Thousand Tomes, an ever-growing compendium of all things Valisthea. The Orchestri Orchestrion, I guess? A personal jukebox for songs collected throughout the game. Cool. Both are located in the hideaways eatery. The Fat Chocobo and can be found on the local map by pressing the touchpad. Sweet. Who are these people? Okay, so you can see there's the Fat Chocobo, Orchestrion. There's another side quest up there. All right, well, let's go check these out before I talk to Karen. Nobody wants to talk to a Karen, right? Help. Don't Hello, Kenneth. Ah, a new face. And, dare I hope, a willing pair of hands. The fat chocobo is a demanding mistress, and we are too few to keep her on her feet. Might I persuade you to deliver a meal or two to souls in need of sustenance? For your trouble, I can offer you the contents of my strongbox and my enduring gratitude. Sounds like a deal to me. I don't see why not. Marvelous. And who exactly do I have the honor of addressing? Clive. Delighted to make your acquaintance, Clive. I'm Kenneth, and mine are the weary shoulders upon which the weight of this fine establishment rests. Now, I have three hungry customers awaiting their victuals. Take these if you would, and be careful, they're hot. Quest accepted. We will prioritize it. Oh, meal. How long has it been? Here you go, sir. Enjoy your hot bowl. Your food. I was hoping it might be. Well, doesn't this look fine? Thank you, lad. You're new, aren't you? Kenneth's running you ragged already, I expect, the old rascal. Well, he did say he'd give me something for my trouble. Something about gold? <laughs> and so he should. We're not slaves anymore. Well met, lad, and keep up the good work. You know, I once worked in a kitchen with a guy named Kenneth. He was a terrible a worker. He lied a lot. It was not fun to work with him. I hope this Kenneth is better. Yeah. Oh, my thanks. <laughs> I hope you do not think me lazy for waiting to be served like a lord. <laughs> Only my former master did not use me kindly, you see. Left me half lame, truth be told. But Sid took me in nonetheless. <laughs> well, the hideaway is the home I never knew, and a mighty fine one at that. I'm getting a very sinking feeling that you this place. With old August before scampering this place is going to be attacked no. at some point by the Empire, and it's probably not going to end well for a lot of these guys. to farming than just seeds and soil. Uh, your food. Just a moment. I need to finish this. I won't be a burden. I'm of no use to anyone as I am, but maybe if I can master this. You no, know, if you don't eat, it's going right. to get cold. See that you eat it before it gets cold. Of course. Thank you. I swear. That's the last one. He doesn't eat it. I'd better let Kenneth know. Then comes and complains and like, hey, you served this to me cold. I'm I'm gonna throw him. I will. All done, I presume? Splendid. They were bearers. All three of them. Not slaves waiting upon their master's pleasure, but men waiting to be fed like equals. Indeed. 
Equality is the very cornerstone upon which our little community is founded. Beyond these walls, we are scorned as slaves. Speaking only when spoken to, eating only what scraps our masters deign to give us. The first hot meal here is the first many will have known. In the hideaway, we are free. Truly free to speak as we please, when we please, and to eat what and when we desire. More than reason enough to trust in Sid's vision, wouldn't you say? Now, I promised you something for your trouble, did I not? The contents of my strongbox are yours to do with as you will. Sweet. Thank you, Clive. Do come and visit me again, won't you? I'll think about it. First, I gotta spend all this money in one place, right? Because that's what you do with all the all the gold, gill, whatever you want to call it. Ooh, some more white right. Sweet. Countless treasure coffers lie across the realm, just waiting to be plundered. If you find one, don't hesitate to kick it open with X and reap the bounty. Go on. No one's looking. I'll do it. A badge of metal. What does this do? Badge of metal. The strength of a city is defined by the guard that mans its walls. The strength of a city guard is defined by the pride in their hearts and the laurels on their breasts. This badge provides us where with one of those two. Increases defense by 10. Sweet. It's good to have. The iron blood were quick to sound the retreat once Titan turned up. Okay, what's here? Changing the tune. Background music played in the hideaway can be changed by accessing the Orchestrion. Tracklist is expanded using Orchestrion roles acquired from the main scenario quest shops or treasure coffers. I wonder if this is going to be similar to Final Fantasy XV where maybe we'll find some from past games. I like that one. Well, we'll have this playing in the back. It's, it's nice and soft. Kind of makes me want to take a little nap. Whoops, I'm going the wrong way. What's up, wizened man? Yours is not a familiar face. Are you new to the hideaway, perchance? You could say that. Well then, allow me to welcome you. I am Harpocrates II Hyperboreus. That's... Uh... What a name. <laughs> Quite a mouthful, I know. Which is why everyone here has taken to calling me simply Tomes. On account of the uh, company I keep. And what varied company. I'm a collector, you see. Not of bijou and baubles, but of stories. The history and culture of these isles have ever been a source of endless fascination to me. But alas, my days of wandering the realm in search of new tales are far behind me. And so I've taken to sharing that which I've gathered with all who might listen. Perhaps you would care to listen. Uh, okay, let's view these I don't believe you've read tomes. this particular chapter before. The Thousand Tomes is a comprehensive compendium of Valisthean lore, covering everything from basic terms to important persons, geography, and history. New information is constantly added as Clyde progresses through the story. Past active time lore entries can also be viewed here. I have a few new notes that might interest you. Clive tells Harpactes of his adventure, and then he updates the tomes. If you have a question for me, I should be happy to answer it. Okay. This would be interesting to read through, because... Yeah, some of the stuff I don't know about. So dominant, those within whom sleeps the power of an icon. Though they look and think no differently to any other man or woman, they can not only cast elemental magics without a crystal, but also transform themselves into beasts of world-shattering strength at any moment. Quality for which they are honored, worshipped, and feared over, feared the realm over. Okay, icon. Magical beings of godlike strength who dwell within human hosts known as, known as dominance, only emerging when the dominant primes. History rec records eight icons in total, each with a unique elemental affinity. It is commonly held that two icons of the same element cannot coexist, but as none has ever witnessed all of these rare creatures together, the conjecture is yet to be proved. When now we've seen, apparently there are two icons of fire. Bearer is a person with a power to cast magics without a crystal. In Valisthea, men and women who awaken as bearers are enslaved. They are marked with a brand upon their cheek and used as tools, a cheaper alternative to the scarce and precious shards. Oh, that's a mouthful. Trying, trying to say precious shards is just 
feels weird on the tongue. This system of slavery has persisted for centuries and has become so ingrained in Felistean life that few take pity upon the bearer's plights, seeing them as less than human. Damn. That sucks. Okay, so Clive. Interesting. So there's a lot about him. Ugh, that's a lot to read right now. I think I'll just pick up on interesting points because there... Yeah, there are so many people to read through here. <laughs> I don't think I'm, I'm going to have time for all of this. So uh, I'll just I'll point out interesting things that I find as I'm reading through all of this. <laughs> it's kind of funny for Joshua. His love and admiration for his elder brother Clive is absolute. He is only too proud to have him serve as first shield. His love for carrots, less so. <laughs> uh, that's, that's good. Okay, another interesting bit of information. Apparently Jill is actually a princess of the Northern Territories. So I guess that's how she became, she was dominant and she was also royalty for another part of the world. So I wonder if we'll find out more about what happened to the Northern Territories. I do want to reiterate a point that I made in the first video. If this dog dies, people will die. Okay, so we still don't really know what happened with Ambrosia either. So I'm assuming she might come back at some point. So this is kind of interesting. It says that Elwyn was born before his father, the previous Domino of the Phoenix, passed away. So he did not inherit the Icon's power. So it sounds like it almost would always skip a generation. Because how many how many kids are going to be born before their father passes away? You know, they, they would have to die while they're still in their mother's womb. So it's, it's interesting that that's how it seems to work. Because then, yeah, you would always have one generation that doesn't have a dominant, I would assume. Unless it just always worked out before where you know, the, the father would die while one of the sons was being born. Oh, so the Duchess and Elwyn are actually cousins. Because so, they both had they both had connection to the bloodline of Dominance of the Phoenix. Ooh, I mean, I know, I, I think back in the day, back during medieval times, Mary and the family was... I mean, obviously not like brother and sister, at least I don't think. But I don't think it was as frowned upon, but it still is kind of, especially in our day and time, it's very weird to think about that. I do wonder if, again, my, my thought of Clive being Ifrit, I wonder if that comes from the fact that they, they had kids, even though they were family. I wonder if somehow that screwed things up. I don't know. So it was ever her purpose in life to preserve her phoenix-bearing bloodline, for which reason she betrayed her husband that she might enter in league with a force she judged the mightier. Hmm. So yeah, it seems like she just wants more power. She definitely... Uh, it's going to be so cathartic when she dies, because I'm really, really hoping she does. Because, <laughs> my god, she's such an awful person. Yeah, so seemingly confirmed here. It says that he was engulfed by Ifrit's fires, so. And seemingly it said that Wade and Tyler were also killed by the Phoenix's flames. It's very weird that we got introduced to these three guys, Tyler, Wade, and Murdoch, and they're just gone. <laughs> and Avis is another one here that just, he and Bias were both just suddenly, <laughs> Bias crushed by a boulder, and then Avis just one, one axe to the shoulder and he's dead, so. A lot of these characters are just suddenly dying off. It's not typically what I expect out of a Final Fantasy game. That was pretty surprising. So here's the Dominant of Fire, a mysterious figure who was first seen amid the chaos of the Imperial Invasion of Phoenix Gate. Immediately before the appearance of the second Icon of Fire, the very Icon that slew the heir to the Ducal Throne. Clyde believes this man to be the Dominant who murdered his brother and has sworn to take his revenge. Yeah, this is... I, I don't know. I don't know. It seems like maybe it'll be somebody else, but... Yeah, I, I, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, got a lot more to get through, so... Again, I'll just point out stuff that I find interesting. Okay, so here we have, I guess, kind of the... The narrative that the Empire sent out. It says, Archduke Elwyn Rossfield was killed in the fighting as were his two sons, though the bodies of the latter were never recovered, having thought to have been wholly consumed by Hellfire. The attack was widely rumored to have been facilitated by the tra tra traitorous Duchess Annabella, although official explanations attempted to shift the blame onto the Phoenix having run inexplicably rampant. So, very interesting that everybody assumes Clive is dead as well. 
So interesting. The Battle of the Twin Realms was a conflict fought between the Holy Empire of Sambrek and the Kingdom of Walud in the year 18, 865. Sembrek Qua forces with the power of the icon Bahamut on their side took to the Strait of Oth took the Strait of Oth back from Walud, putting an end to the blockade that had lasted several decades. The Waluders, looking to hold back the Sembrek Qua advance by any means necessary, formed an alliance with the Dalmechian Republic, who themselves were waging war against the Iron Kingdom on the Western Front, prevented the Empire from prog progressing any further. So this sort of explains why Dalmechia and Walud were having those conversations at the beginning of the game. In reading all of this, because this is the last lay of the land bit of information, it seems like there is a lot of politics going on. So I, I wonder how much of that is going to play into this this game as a whole. It's, it's, it definitely is setting up a lot of interesting backstory in, in a lot of these different territories and realms. But anyways, on to the mysteries of the realms. I will, again, point out anything I find interesting. Okay, I actually mentioned this in the first recording session, but Crystal, one of the most valuable materials known to mankind thanks to his ability to channel ambient ether from the air, allowing those without an innate power to do so to cast magics. And as most Velistheans cannot live without magic, its supply and distribution is heavily regulated by governments across the Twins. A given shard can only channel a certain amount of ether before it shatters, so the need for new crystals is, is incessant. So like I said, it, it's kind of interesting how each crystal seems to have its own power that people can use. So I'm guessing there's one that gives you water, one that gives you fire, uh, seemingly one that gives you air. I don't exactly know how that's useful. I, I wonder what else, maybe, maybe one for earth so you can like, break rocks and make bricks and stuff. I don't know. It's interesting lore for the world. Okay, so there's a difference between the smaller shards that people can use and these municipal shards, which seemingly, I guess, have a lot more ether to them, so it takes a lot longer for them to run out, I assume. Okay, yeah, larger crystals can channel more ether than smaller ones. Gotcha. So one might use a small ration shard to grill a fish, but would require a large municipal crystal to fire a blacksmith's forge. Okay, that's cool. Interesting. So there are eight elements, fire, water, wind, earth, ice, thunder, light, and dark. Or more rarely, be unexpected. So I wonder what that unexpected means. I'm sure we'll see some of that at some point, but I wonder how, like, how, how are thunder, light, and dark? I guess thunder for electricity, but... Light and dark elements? I wonder how those are used in daily life. But I really like the world building going on right here. It, it's almost kind of what Pixar's Onward tried to do, but I, I, I like the fact that we're actually seeing it in use, whereas Onward just kind of made it a modern day setup, even though there's still magic in the world. Oh, so Clive actually wasn't born with the Blessing of the Phoenix. Joshua bestowed it upon him. Okay, I missed that if they talked about it in the first recording session. So that's, that is interesting. And again, it does give some credence to my idea that maybe Clive is going to be Ifrit's dominant since the Phoenix powers are not his own. So the other thing, just thinking on the Phoenix, the other thing that makes me feel like Joshua may not be gone for good is because we had that section where we fought with him and then we fought with him as the Phoenix. So I don't know why they would have that section where we learned how to fight as the Phoenix as if we never did again. So either he's coming back somehow, I don't know how, or like I said, Clive might be come so, somehow will become the new dominant of the Phoenix and we'll get to fight as the Phoenix again. Because I just I think it's weird that we learned how to fight as the Phoenix if we were only going to have that one battle with him. OK, so apparently these owls, uh, I guess. We had that moment where Elwyn was speaking to the owl. I guess he was putting his thoughts inside of it. And I guess this this incantation at the end is how you activate that ability. So that's kind of interesting. Again, I like the fact they're really doing a good job of delving into the lore. Which I, I did just realize that I accidentally went to the beast area. I'm not even done with the mysteries of the realm yet. Cool. Okay, so here, here, right here, on occasion, a dominant will lose control of their powers and see their icon, icon run riot. In my mind, that means it could very well be that Ifrit is controlled by Clive and he just lost control for whatever reason. 
Or, again, the uh, the even sadder idea that maybe Torgal is the one that lost control because he was just a puppy. We'll see if that ends up becoming true or not. So interesting that these brands seem to mark the bearers. I'm guessing we'll probably have a few moments where somebody who's not branded will show that they actually are a bearer. For a little bit of a surprise. I have looked through all of that. Alive. That was a lot of reading to do. But nice to see that they are really doing do a good job go of help? like building this like world and I, I think they're doing a good job so far. I'm definitely enjoying what I'm seeing. But alright. We got another side quest over here. Jeffrey. Damn it. We'll be needing more wood. But if I step away to fetch any, this lot will be down around our ears. Ah, you there. Perfect timing. I couldn't persuade you to fetch me some timber, could I? I'd be happy to. I'd be happy to. Oh, thank you. You didn't sound very happy, Clive. And the hideaway both. It takes a lot of work to keep this place standing. <laughs> More than we can manage, if I'm honest. It certainly looks like you've got your hands full. Ah, you can say that again. The Fallen knew their craft, make no mistake, but not even their handiwork lasts forever. That's why the walls need shoring up. Can't have the uh, vegetable patch crushed before our first harvest now, can we? <laughs> Good point. No, I suppose not. All right, where can I find this wood? Ask over at the White Ads. They'll point you in the right direction. Thanks again. I really appreciate the help. Yeah, no problem. We will prioritize it. Not even getting any gold for this, man. I'm just doing it to do it. Why do I have to be such a good person? I could just say, screw you, man. Go get your own wood. But no, I got to go do it myself. What am I thinking? Hello, Carpenter. Excuse me. The man working over by the garden sent me to fetch some wood. Ah, that'll be Jeffrey, Master Carpenter. Luck would have it, we've just finished cutting the timber he's after. You take as much as you need from the stack. Thank you. No, not at all. We appreciate the assistance. Ah, uh, take the planks. Here we are. I better get this to... Jeffrey, was it? Eh, just learning these names so these guys can probably die later. I have such a hopeful outlook on life, don't I? <laughs> oh, you're back. Hope fetching that wood wasn't too much trouble. Confirm. Will this be enough? This will do nicely, thank you. With a bit of luck, the walls won't be falling in on us just yet. That sounds ominous. Oh, it's not as bad as all that. And it's a damn sight better than the alternative. We're safe, we're warm, and we're hidden. What more could we ask for? Now stop fretting and take this. You've earned it. Welcome to the fold. There's no need to. That's not a matter of need, my friend. You're one of us now. One of us. One of us. One of us. Quest complete? Okay. Five more experience. We got a meteorite and a gill bug. Oh, it's valuable and can be traded for gill. Sweet. I like that. I also like it whenever we're, you're giving something and basically told, hey, you should sell this. <laughs> I hate getting stuff that you're not entirely sure whether to sell it or use it in crafting. Okay, I believe I can upgrade something. Yeah, so I can make the iron bracers plus two. Give me more HP and defense. Not my best Excellent. work, but it'll do. All right, Karen, coming to your shop now. I think that's all I need. Yeah, we're good. I need supplies for my journey to Lost Wing. Otto said you could provide them. Can I speak to your manager? <laughs> Does the newcomer I'm sure you get that all the time. To make demands of a poor old matron before even introducing himself. Oh, this is definitely a Karen. <sighs> it's Clive. Well, Clive. I hear that dog is yours. You bet it Since is. Since he followed Sid home one night, I've seen to it that his chin's rubbed and his belly fed. Okay, good. Though I suppose that's your job now. 
Unless you lose him again. I won't. Not again. Thank you for watching him. Look at that, guys. Not so, every Terran is bad. Were you going to buy something? What? You didn't think I'd shower your lordship with my hard-won wares while you swagger about with a pocket full of gill? Life doesn't work that way, lad. Now, let's see some coin. Oh, right. Both consumable items and gear can be purchased at shops around Valisthea. Shop stock changes as the story progresses, so be sure to check in frequently. There's our broadsword. I can buy it for 500, which I do have. Also buy some iron bracers and potion, high potion, stone skin tonic. Yeah, we'll buy a broadsword. Me blind, you know. So we'll sell this infantry Not plate. And the belt. I reckon I can find a buyer. The I'm thankful you got that much. Okay, so 200 for the guild bug. I reckon I can find a buyer. Sweet. That's all. Why are you barely a guilty your name? Torgal. You taking his side now? And after all I've done for you. All right. All right, I can make an exception. Nobody can say no to a puppers. But just this once, mind. My stores are getting cluttered and I need to make room for the next shipment. Thank you. Thank me? Thank you, dog. <laughs> can I pet him? I want to pet him. Let me pet him. It's not letting me pet him. Ah, <sighs> I'm angry. All right. Well, now that we got a broadsword, well, can we? We can. Broadsword plus you one. Can find me later. Dress to the fives. Can we do the second one? No, we cannot. Oh wait. No, we need a meteorite. That it. Damn. Okay. Fine. Retrieve sex. Ooh. Ooh. What's this? The Arit, Ar maybe? I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's now accessible. This customizable virtual battle skate provides Clyde a safe location to test out new abilities and train against all manner of enemies. Additional options will become available as Clyde progresses through the story. Okay. Oh, okay. I guess I have to. All right. I'll. If this is interesting, I'll keep it in. If not, I'll skip it. Hall of Virtue is a fully customizable battlescape that provides class safe location, test out abilities, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yeah, that was not interesting at all. You all done? Hmm. Leaving already, are ya? It's you I'll miss the most, Lady Karen. It always is. Don't stop you going, does it? This should be fun. Right. I'm excited. Come on, Torgal. Dash travel. Use the world map to instantly travel to previously unlocked locations. New locations are unlocked by progressing through the main story or discovering waymarks known as obelisks. The ma world map will open automatically upon leaving an area, but can also be accessed at any time via the main menu. Okay. You ready, Torgal? Are you ready, bud? Oh, I know. I'm excited to be traveling with you two. Can't wait to fight alongside you. Watch you kick a bunch of ass. There's a good girl. Hungry, Ooh. are you? Hello, Chocobos. Hope we find Ambrosia soon. All right, so to the Great Wood. Bastard blood. 
Blood flies everywhere. I told you we should have taken the Crystal Road. And I told you well, we're outlaws. Well, you want every bounty hunter in Storm harrying us from here to the Holy Capital? That's a good point. Besides, what's wrong with a shortcut through nature's splendor? Get off. The Deadlands claim more of the realm each day. But a place like this still exists is a miracle in itself. Blood flies and all. Do we really not bring Torgo we'll along for the ride? We'll Imperial ride? Land soon. You all right? Never better. Sounds like it. Uh, okay, good. I was going to say. <laughs> that there is Hello, a buddy. hound. Soon took to hunting. Fearless as you like. It's good to have you back, Torgo. Now, we don't want to be caught in the forest after nightfall. I suppose not. Fanning embers. Torkoal has joined the party and will fight alongside Clive. Use the left directional button to toggle between item shortcuts and pet commands. The following three commands are available. Sick, attack, heal, cast cure, or ravage. Launch an enemy into the air. The accessory known as the Ring of Timely Assistance removes the need for giving Torgal commands. When this item is equipped, Torgal will attack and heal automatically based on the current battle situation. Did I mention That's cool. Be deadly beasts? They'll be deadly beasts. Nothing a trained assassin can't handle them. How reassuring. You're welcome. <gasps> <For that band>. <gasps> <gasps> yes. Hit him. Good boy. <laughs> Yes. I. Oh, that's. Oh, there's different things that you can do. Oh, I have to try them all. <laughs> Am I going too fast for you? I just shut up, Sid. I'm playing with my dog. Is there anything else? <laughs> oh. All right, guys. This is it. This is the entire game right here. Just you, oh, like that, you can pet the dog. Somehow I just knew there'd be a trophy for that. Uh, one more. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm happy. I'm smiling. Let's go. Time to kick some ass. Woo! Maybe they're friendly, like Toggle. Oh, maybe they're not. <laughs> Use square just as an opponent attacks to parry the strike, temporarily slowing time and leaving the opponent open to a counter. Okay. I didn't even mean to do that, but here we are. Oh, okay. All right. Level up. We still have a way to go. Yeah, I do wish there was some kind of lock-on mechanic. Maybe there will be at some point, and they just haven't introduced it yet, but it's definitely difficult whenever you've got all these enemies crowding around you and you have to turn the camera to go see who you're fighting and when they're about to attack. Oh. What? Oh, no. That's, uh... That's terrifying. And we're going to have to fight that, aren't we? What in good Grieger's name is he doing this far south? Looking for food. No more walls where he's from. The north was one of the first parts of Storm to fall to the Blight. Poor sod. I'd invite him over for a cup of tea if I didn't think he'd eat the dog. Don't worry, Torgo. We won't invite him to dinner. He'll be the dinner. Let's try and stay out of its path. Ooh, remember when I said vampire thorns? Well, the shrubs of these parts are much better. I knew only thing to mention this now. <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay, I I think L1 is the lock-on, because I think I did a... I think that's what I pressed to get it to do that. Oh, okay. Ow. Good stuff, Torgal. I'll take it from here. Ooh, get some Y right. Nice. Time to move or squeeze through. Or are we doing both? We're doing both. After okay. you. Thank you kindly. Say there was a time they blocked out the stars. Down was the only way left for them to go. There's probably a lesson to be learned from that. But it can wait. Come on. Asking all lessons, right? They can all wait to be learned. Mind your head. And oh. Two sharp bangs. Excellent. Music's gone. Ah. A wyvern. I can see that. Doesn't have to be a friend of yours, does it? Oh, ow. Get him! Hitting him. Enemy slain. Hey, not too bad, not too shabby. Must be a nest nearby. Keep your eyes open. Got it. I will say, I feel like the boss battles are really fun in this. I, I think it's honestly just those battles against multiple enemies well it appears we won't be going this way it's a little overwhelming with this system of fighting it feels like the oh, system is more set up to take that. on one enemy at a time what what you got Torgal? what is it boy at oh. least one of us why trust in your own animal instinct when you have an actual animal at your side? Exactly. If you're lost, hold down L3 and let Torgal point you in the right direction. There's these woods. Thank nice. you, Torgal. First one's up here. Some magic ash. Sweet. Yeah. Well, 
you I think. I'm the one she felt my fault. Yeah, good we're stuff, Torgo. Doesn't mean I have to like it. No. No, it doesn't. No, it's okay. I know where I'm going. I'm just checking to be sure there's nothing around here that I missed. Yeah, I gotta say, I mean, this game, it looks fantastic. I mean, no, no real surprise, because most games these days look really good. But, man, I mean, this... <laughs> Game looks beautiful. Seems like another boss arena. Uh, it's the big boy. Sharp. You'd better hope so. <laughs> yep. This shouldn't take too long. So much for your shortcuts. What? Huh. Still short. It's not quite as quick. Oh god, yep. But it'll be a damn sight quicker if you help me. I thought exactly. Okay. Alright. Gotta figure this out. Not this time. Oh boy. Okay. I'm not doing too hot here. Heal up real quick. Sick of toggle. Okay, getting a little bit better. Yeah, I like the way you think, Clive. Let's get him. Yeah! Alright, I'm getting it. I'm feeling it. Oh, and I... I screwed it up. Oh no, he's doing it again. I thought we said he wasn't gonna do it again. You lied to me, Sid. That'll help. Oh, okay. Not this time. Stun him. There we go. Ah, yeah, great. We'll find Hound. How much stagregation does he have left? <laughs> Alright, Fafnir of the North. A gnarled scale and more Wyrite. Oh, what are you, tired? Come on, Clyde, that was nothing. 
Especially because he's not dead, apparently. Oh, come on. Stand back. Oh. Yep. <laughs> oh, Sid, you badass. Why didn't you do that sooner, though? Oh. You're, That's why. You're dominant. I am. I. Interesting. Well, not by choice, mind. Old bloody realm of strapping young lads. And it was this sorry sack of bones realm who saw fit to home. Sid, you say you want to help Dominance and Bearers, but what's in it for you? What's in it for me? The same as for all of us. What we want and deserve. Freedom. Save for our knack, Dominance and Bearers are no different from anyone else. The ability to use magic or summon great beasts should command respect, but instead has left us outcasts. Our kind are used and discarded like tools, yet we are men, so why must we die as less? I see. So what you're saying is you want to start a war. <laughs> ah, you flatter me, lad. But my days as a firebrand are long behind me. No, I only wish to offer our kind a choice. A place where we can die on our own terms. Okay. See, that's... I, I don't know. I think the design of Sid is what's throwing me off a little bit. It said at the end of last episode, his voice doesn't quite match his appearance. And even that line there, you know, he said, no longer a young firebrand. He looks like he's still in his like early 30s. I think he's meant to be probably a bit older, but they just didn't design him to look that way. Very odd. Clive, what exactly do you plan on doing when you find this dominant of fire? I won't kill him. What do you think? I'll show him the mercy he showed my brother mm. and cut out the tongue of any man who tries to talk me out of it. All right. Forest dark enough, was it? <laughs> Wee. Oh. Nice. I feel like that's probably the best way to take these guys down. You guys took care of these over here? Very nice. See that river? We follow her upstream and we'll be in Lost Wing in Nelta. Okay, so this is the in way to go. Time. Right. Is as in any good JRPG? Oh. This actually took me further upstream. But you gotta do all the exploring. Level up! Very nice. Took down another one of those wyvern things. We get to open the chest with some meteorite. And what's this over here? Sweet. Ah. I like that feature though that 
If you can't use it, it automatically uses it. You can't keep it. I mean. The Royal Scout. Someone's far from home. Let's follow him. And? Hey, they're just down that way. All of them. Grieger's my witness. Excellent. We move. She's one I also can't wait until she dies. I, I, I don't understand. Have I not proven loyal? It is true my liege values loyalty above all else. <laughs> but were you not quick to betray your countrymen for the promise of coin? Yep. That's what happens. Oh. I guess I should have guessed because of the feathers, but... That woman. She must be Garuda's dominant. Benedicta Harmon, commander of Walud's elite intelligences. If we can capture her. You! Weapons on the ground, Imperials! It's over with that. Time to fight. At least they're not giant lizards. What a lady on the wind! Punisher. Aha. Harried. Harried again. Ha <laughs> ha Screen flashes orange like this during a pivotal moment in battle. Repeatedly tap square to either press or fend off. Okay. Ah, button mash. Cinematic clash. Behind you. Button mash. Okay. Let's avoid those. Okay. I see. I see. Did I just see Futon? Oh, 
Okay, I gotta stop getting hit by that one. Uh, and I did it again. Okay, no, that's... Caton. Much health left. How? And again, you can't handle me. One more time. Time to die. Right. Oh, yeah, that actually did finish him. Sweet. The Midnight Raven Slate. Badge of Might. Awarded to soldiers for unparalleled displays of courage on the field of battle, the feeling of accomplishment and enkindles in the recipient's heart is thought to enhance future performance. Attack by seven. Sweet. We'll definitely be equipping that after this. They thought we were Imperials. Well, you do look the part. Not to say, I think you're still wearing Imperial armor. Though you fight like a true shield of Rosaria, and one blessed by the Phoenix at that. <laughs> so, where did Benedicta go? Speaking of which, I wonder, does the other icon of fire give blessings, do you think? You don't believe me. And lo, the creator did make of the elements eight icons to serve as keepers of the one law. Not that I've ever set too much store by holy doctrine, but on that point, it's clear. Fire has always had just the one warden, as of all the rest. A new one can't be born until the previous dies, and even that can take years. The thing is, you don't strike me as a liar. Which leaves but one person who might be able to shed some light on the matter. And they're in Lost Swing. As are our Waluda friends, I would imagine. We should hurry before it gets dark. But what if someone discovers the bodies? Well, then they'll be sorely disappointed. <laughs> no more gold on these guys yeah I, I do wonder why that would happen though as far as why would there be two icons of fire S uh, seemingly after all this time after it's been this one way why would it suddenly change what would cause that and again my mind goes toward the thought that maybe because both the Duchess and Elwyn were both of the line of the Phoenix. Maybe that caused some weird ripple thing and formed two icons of fire in the process. That's the only thing that I can think of, but we'll see. Stage replay and arcade mode are now available in the hideaways 
Arete Stone. Enter the virtual battlescape for details on each of the new options. Okay. That might be something for later. Now we are off to Orabel Downs. The idyllic plains that stretch across the southern reaches of the Holy Empire are sparsely populated unless no one unless one knows where to look. Some time later. The Holy Empire Sambrech. So much for arriving before sunset. Oh, I didn't realize we were this close. Any idea what that is they built the village around? The Fallen Ruin. I've heard some call it an airship. Though its flying days seem to be behind it. It's a shame, that. Well, are we going to see Sid flying an airship? I truly think a dominance waiting for us in that village. My scout has never given me any reason to doubt him. Which is why I think we should hurry. Come on. What is that? Attuning with an obelisk allows Clive to travel quickly to the location via both the world map and local map. Clive need only approach an obelisk to attune with it. Okay. Louder than words. Actions. That's that's what speaks louder than words. Okay, so we will add the badge of might. Get more attack. Okay, so we have 428 ability points. So first, we'll add this one, even though it's not that important. We'll also go ahead and master pressing X and square while in midair, as well as using X to kick off an enemy. So I see here we've got seemingly level ups for Torgo along the way. So right now he's just a lone hunter. He only has normal attack and lifting attack, so I'm guessing... Either the more you work with them, or maybe as the story progresses, I'm sure at some point we'll figure out how to figure out how to level them up. But that's cool. Good torque. Touch the obelisk. This is the first time I've seen one of these. Perhaps I can use them as way marks. All right, we'll pet Torgal again because <laughs> you know it makes me happy. Oh good, there is a faster movement. I'm glad for that. Figures up ahead. But are they friends or foes? It's a good question. <laughs> First I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. You! What? You know what to do, boy. It's over. <laughs> Okay. Level 14. I'm starting to get the hang of this. Why? What is it they want? You're welcome to ask the next ones we meet. Let me know how it goes. I think the problem is I, I've got to start adding in some of the other things outside of just my attack, fire, and dash. Like, I actually do have to start jumping a little bit and using the, the X and square button together. Also, punishing foes is a very good thing to do. Quest destination nearby. No sign of the royalists. Or anyone else for that matter. It's too bloody quiet. Even for this hour. What do we do now? First we look for my scout. You start here, I'll circle around the back. How do I let you know if I find him? Good question. <laughs> Shout. Good plan, Sid. Battle. I like that plan. So yeah, little fast travel points here. 
That's good. I don't feel like there's gonna be things popping up to fight us. That sounds like a child. What are you hiding from, child? I'm here to it's help. All right. I'm not one of them. My friend and I win. With the Imperial Army. And we've come to help. Do you know where your parents are? In... In the church. Then I'm going to find them. And make sure they're safe. Can you stay hidden here? Until then. To the church, then. Before that, I'm gonna do a little exploring. The rat. Hey, Sid. Church, I know. I'm one step ahead of you. Oh, okay. Oh wait, what was that? You said something else. Sorry. The church. I know. I'm one step ahead of you. You go in through the front. I'll take the rear. Anyone stands in our way, the other can stab him in the back. Ah, good plan. Good plan. And down into the pits we go. This man's gonna die if we don't get into a healer. Enough of your barking, dog! About time. Stand back. I thought he was going to kick in the door, but that works just <clears throat> as well. Who the hell are you? Climb! Well, he Thought did you shout. Ain't coming. You still alive, Gav? <laughs> Barely. Been doing what I can for the villagers, but I thought you were joking. <laughs> it's all right. He's with me. Is this everyone? No, there were others. A pair of royalists came for the bearers just before you arrived. Was a dominant among them? Maybe. It's not like he was old in a sign. Uh oh. Probably well, need to kill him. We'll give you one guess where he's going. Clive, after him. Gotta run, gotta run. Oh, well, he's fast. Any word from the scouts? Not yet, my lady, but we have the dominant's companion. It's only a matter of time before we seize our quarry. Very good. Dominant's the companion. Others? Wonder who that is. The bearers have been taken to Kaer Norvent. Some may still be worth keeping should the dominant elude us. All is in hand, my lady. They will not be spoiled. I give you my word. <laughs> Gentlemen, a toast. Will you join me? <laughs> My thanks. Uh, hey. To our lady of the wind. And the king! Hey. Ooh. <laughs> oh, the Imperials drink this piss? Well, it would go some way to explain their breath. Ha <laughs> <laughs> uh, hilarious. Lady Benedicta, Imperials! Uh oh. And instead of killing them, you lead the rat straight to us. Mercy. Oh. Yep. No. No mercy from her. Look what we have here, boys. An imperial bearer. God. I was getting bored. Let me guess, she's not going to do any fighting, or...? Boo.
Yep. She's Garuda. Where did Dance Chirata. Or Chirata. I don't I don't know. What is that thing? If this means what I think it does. Sid has some explaining to do. Who's that? Okay, all right, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Sorry, we got this, I think. Maybe not, I don't know. wasn't clean but not too bad not too shabby clerics medallion at a glance what appears to be a holy relic able to channel the power of the divine into curative energies actually contains the dust of a light expected crystal known to be a catalyst for restorative arts so it increases the healing potency of potions by 20 percent i like it But I guess Garuda. Got some fight in you. Garuda Even could summon children, so maybe she. It's still Garuda. Five. <laughs> Look who's here to save the day. Is this how you recruit all of your charges? Don't recall you complaining, Benedicta. So, Sidolphus, remind me, why was it that you betrayed your kingdom? I asked you a question, Lord Commander. Mm. Why? Because I'd had enough of you and your king's antics. And yet here you are, stealing my branded. What are you plotting? As if I'd tell you. Lady Benedicta, we have secured the dominant. Holy oh, something, isn't there? And she's gone. Seems like maybe she just has a thing for other dominants. Because obviously she wants to be with Kupka, I think his name is. And seemingly she, she and Sid were. No. 
possibly a thing in the past. We head back to Lost Wing. One of the villagers may have heard something. But we can't just... Which is why I sent Gav. The man has a nose for these things. Trust me. 